Well, check this out, guys. A nostalgia lover shells out big bucks to go back in time. A near mint condition sealed 1986 VHS copy of the blockbuster movie Back to the Future just sold, forget this, $75,000 at an auction. That's a new record for a videotape. There was even a bidding war over it. A sealed 1986 copy. It was from a collection owned by actor Tom Wilson, who played Biff Tannen in the 80s classic film. Back to the Future is going for $100,000? I That smells fishy to me, because Back to the Future is not rare. There's no famous Back to the Future misprints. It's like, if you're, if you're gonna start, if you're, if you're, if you're gonna be a scammy person, much in my opinion, if you're gonna be a scuzzy person who wants to artificially create a market, and you want you want that that big headline such and such sold for a million dollars, and you want it to be a big headline, you're not gonna pick the obscure thing that nobody's heard about. You're gonna say, what's what's popular? Uh, oh, Back to the Future. That's, everyone loves Back to the Future. Back to the Future. Yeah, Back to the Future sold for a million dollars. Cause that's a big, famous, important movie. You're not gonna base your, your fake speculator market on like Sleepaway Camp 2. I thought about this. Oh, are you filming me? Sure. What makes something valuable? Well, that's a complex question with many answers, but after witnessing the sudden rise of the VHS tape speculation market, we set out to ask ourselves this very question. After all, we do own thousands and thousands of rare, weird, and disgusting VHS tapes. Do we really think they're worth anything? Nope. Please state your name for the record. Uh, my name is Richard Evans. And your profession? I am a certified expert in falling upwards. VHS tapes were, were shitty, mass produced, and I'm kind of glad they're gone and obsolete. They've been replaced by better things. Suddenly, out of nowhere, VHS tapes are now a, a, a rare and valuable commodity. And there's supposedly a huge collector's market now? I, I don't know where this came from. First of all, what is speculation? In economic terms, it just means the buying and selling of stuff that's risky. It could go up in value or decrease in value. It's not a stable commodity. You buy something in the hopes that one day it will go up in value. There's never really been any kind of indicator that a sealed VHS tape is one day gonna be worth lots of money. So this craze of buying and selling professionally graded unopened VHS tapes sealed in plexiglass is something new. It's kind of like playing the lottery just with worse odds. So I suppose if the tape is older, maybe from the mid 80s and still sealed, it's probably more rare than say a new copy of Jerry Maguire. But will that make it valuable someday? Is it just about rarity? Or is it more complex and sinister than that? We're here to talk about what makes something valuable. Yes. It was your birthday recently, and I have a birthday present for you, which pertains to this very subject. Okay. One of a kind, or the last of its kind, to exist in the world. Oh my God, we have a Therapy Plus roller? The design of the single roller makes it extremely effective for self-treatment. Remember, Therapy Plus is usually applied by yourself. However, for the purpose of this instructional tape, I will demonstrate the correct use. <laughs> demonstrate. They can't even give her a shirt. It's it's the thing. It's the thing from the thing we watch. Yes. The, 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 the ooh, oh. <laughs> the thing just rolls. Now remember what happened with this, and this this goes into why this could be valuable. A little term called a, a tape as well. A little term called provenance, which means it has a story behind it. The creator of this was eventually sued for fraud because he sold a spiky hairbrush that had no medical value and claimed it did. Yeah, it could cure arthritis and, and MS. And yes, 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 yes. It's so... It did your taxes for you. Right. We have a Therapy Plus device with a little bit of provenance to it. It has a history. It was, it's uh, uh, now illegal. Um, 
I don't know, <laughs> but it it, uh, it 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 exists in its original packaging, never used. Uh, the shipping containers there. I'm assuming it is exceedingly rare. Now, is there a market for those who collect obscure, no longer uh, useful, no longer sold, bizarre fad medical products? I bet you there is. There, there might do you remember, be. Do you remember the sauna suit? They melted off by saunaing. Yes, sauna. The Swedish way to get rid of excess body water easily and simply. Just sweat it off. I, I remember the Hawaii chair. What's the Hawaii chair? Oh, that's a chair that had a thing that would spin you around when you sat on it. It had a rotating seat. Okay. <laughs> and there's this brilliant infomercial where this this lady's like trying to use like like she's trying to do office work while she's sitting in this chair. And it's obviously the most difficult thing in the world, but it's a commercial. She has to act like it's great. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I can really feel this working. Hawaiian chair while answering phones, using the computer, balancing books, or filing paperwork. Well, there, there's there's another factor to, to rarity. Yeah. It's rarity relative to the amount of people who give a shit about it, too. Because, like, yes. you talk about the, the, the roller matron here, the Therapy Plus. Like, the, the, the three of us are the only people who give a shit about the Therapy Plus. Yeah. So financially, this isn't going to be worth that much because we're the only persons who would care. Now, none of us are claiming to be experts in collecting, even though technically we're collectors ourselves. We own three gremlin puppets, random props from Star Trek The Next Generation, Back to the Future, and even a baby bink from Baby's Day Out. Oh, oh my, my God. God! It's a baby bink! We also own actual autographed props used in the Froggy Fresh music videos. Remember Froggy Fresh? Item number six on my list is on lock. Gotta get that super hot John Cena lunchbox. Then there are things that are near and dear to us that we framed and preserved. Our wall of autographs, for example. Some are made out to us personally. Some just signed pictures of celebrities that we like. We saved a page from a shooting script that was doodled on by Macaulay Culkin, and we have an original drawing sent to us by Justin Roiland. We also have props from our own films, like Space Cop and Feeding Frenzy, that we have on display. And last but not least, the framed original Dick the Birthday Boy Polaroid photo. Literally one of a kind. We collect these things simply because we like to. The value to us is sentimental. They aren't investments, and we're not betting that any of it is going to go up in value, nor do we have plans to resell them. Will some of it be worth something someday? Maybe. But that part isn't important to us. It's a hobby, like collecting bottle caps. Just way more expensive and embarrassing. There's things that are mass-produced, like baseball cards, comic books, stamps, where either they're thrown in the garbage or there's one left of this kind. Superman was, you know, five Superman comics exist in the world, blah, 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 rarity. Um, but then there's like one of a kind objects that are valuable because of their association to either a famous person or a famous event. Like I always see those auctions where it's like, uh, the, the Sotheby's is auctioning off uh, a letter from, from John Lennon to Paul McCartney, uh -huh. a handwritten letter, August 12th. 1972. Paul, it's me, John. I hate your guts. You still owe me that money. You still owe me that money. <laughs> I saw you last week in London and I didn't want to talk to you. So I passed you by in the street, you piece of trash. By the way, your new record's pretty good. <laughs> Yoko sends her best. Burn in hell, John. You know, and it's like, okay, framed, good condition. It's written on like, you know, college ruled notebook paper. <laughs> the letters there, right? That's been ripped open by Paul McCartney. Provenance. That's that has a story to it, or like something. As opposed from, to for like a letter, letter to like one member of Nickelback to another member of Nickelback. <laughs> yes. That would probably be worth far less. Yes, it could be worth a hundred dollars. <laughs> I mean, yes, it could be worth a hundred dollars. Yes. Somebody who really loves Nickelback may like that, but their popularity is somewhere under the Beatles. It's. Somewhere under the Beatles. Let's just say that. Let's be kind. <laughs> now, 
let's get back to tapes. We have a large VHS and DVD collection, or I guess a better word for it is accumulation. We collect movies for two reasons. The first reason is we review them on our shows, but the second reason is that we're just fans of weird B-movies. We enjoy watching old, terrible movies and having B-movie nights. The condition of the tapes isn't important to us, as long as it still plays. So why would someone want to collect a tape sealed in a case that they can never ever open? Well, it could be as simple as they happen to love that movie and want to save the best copy of it they can, but more likely is because they are speculating in the value increasing over time. Speculation, it's, it's nothing new, like people buy old cars and you know they, they go up in value and people buy old comic books and they go up in value lately we've been seeing uh, uh, things that weren't classically collectibles become collectibles you got like mass-produced Nintendo cartridges a collectible collectible when everybody's collecting something that severely limits its possibility of it being valuable people go on a craze and buy up things that they think will be worth something in the future. The famous, most famous one in recent times is the Beanie Baby craze. When they're first released, you can get them for about five to seven dollars. Once they retire, the value goes up. In like two years, they're worth like $245 and stuff. And there is one Beanie Baby that's actually worth money now. Which one? Is it the Princess Di one? It's the Princess Diana one. And everybody bought the Princess Diana one. Did How did it become worth money then? Because that's usually the that's usually the Achilles heel of the speculator market. Everyone buys it, think it'll be worth something, but everyone bought it and there's too many. Here's the stupid reason why. Yeah? Because when they started making them, they made a, a, a very small amount of them with a certain kind of pellet inside that made it heavier. Uh-huh. And then they stopped it and said, let's fill it with the softer, lighter pellets that make them ship less, cost to ship less. So the if you find a Princess Diana purple beanie baby with the different kind of stuffing in it, <laughs> then it's worth So how does one sell a VHS tape that they dug out of a box in their basement? First of all, it would need to be professionally graded and authenticated. This is a service that can cost upwards of $100 a tape. Which is not a new concept. They've been doing that with a, a, a lot of things. But my question is this. Who the fuck is an expert on VHS tapes? Because they can't, they can't rate the tape. The, well, the, the, the grading companies don't determine the don't, value. No, no. But condition is one of the ways that people who bid yes. on these things determine value. Yes. And, and that's where the, the experts come in, because there's always experts. The thing <laughs> is though, if you have a sealed copy of Back to the Future and you just put it up on eBay and say, I've, uh, then people will say, well, what's the condition grading? Uh -huh. I, I don't know, look at, the, <laughs> look at the pictures and guess yourself. It plays great. Well, I can't, I'm not an expert. Yeah. Did you have it professionally graded? No. Well, you should have it professionally graded, then put it on eBay so we could see what the condition is officially. If you're gonna be speculating, yeah, that's that's a useful tool. Yes, yes. exactly. It, it gives some kind of validity to what is generally a scam. If you're gonna be a parasite trying to enrich yourself off of garbage you found in a dumpster, it's a very useful tool. It's like, it's like when there is a system in place, you can trust the system. It's like the government. You can always trust the, the tax code, right? It's there, it, or it's there. It's I. It's there. Someone did it. Someone set this up. Therefore, I should trust it. Your 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 copy of 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 Jaws, that's in in mint condition. It could have been sitting next to a magnet for the last thirty years, and that tape is effectively blank. All they can really judge is the condition of the cardboard box and. Is that really what you're collecting? Then it needs to be listed by a trusted auction house. Who then takes a commission on the final sale price. Now, while this video isn't about the grading companies or the auction houses, we did note one thing of interest. Tapes being auctioned on official auction house websites seem to have a lot more individual bids than eBay. In fact, most graded VHS tapes on eBay had zero bids. 
Are we implying anything by mentioning this? Not at all! You're trying to get a bunch of money easy? What you do is you go to the flea market, you grab every sealed copy you find of like Jurassic Park and Titanic, and then you have your friend, my opinion, my, my personal opinion, your friend starts the company who grades the tapes and you hey, hey friend, here's my copy of, of Jurassic Park. It's in great condition, isn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah, friend, my grading company says that's 9.0. I'm gonna hand it to my other friend who works at the auction house. And oh look, it's now worth $100,000. This video, however, is not about the credibility of grading companies or the auction houses. There are plenty of other videos on the internet about that if that's your interest. No, we're more fascinated by what makes something valuable. Well, oh, what the f is this? Will VHS tapes go up in value in, say, 10, 20 years? Are we sitting on a gold mine in our screening room? Nope. The movies that seem to fetch the most money are generally popular movies. Oftentimes, the earlier the release, the more it's worth. For example, John Carpenter's Halloween, probably released a million times on all different formats. But this particular VHS tape is graded at a 9. It's sealed, and it's from 1981 which means it's probably a very early, if not the first edition. Or this copy of First Blood on Beta. Never opened. I think it's the original release, near perfect condition. And sealed, of course. Or this first printing of Goonies, which someone is asking $75,000 for. So, we decided to do a little experimenting. Come on! Oh, fuck! Ow! The tapes are this way! We found six random movies in various forms from our collection to send off to a grading company just to see what happens. So I'm checking out now and I'm paying the $85 fee to have our tape graded. By professionally a, graded. Professionally graded by a company on the internet. All right, Rich, the experiment begins. What we said was, a sealed copy of Jurassic Park in pretty good condition. Not sure of the year of the release, but it's possible it's a first edition because there's a promotional sticker on it. Another Hollywood movie in the best condition we could find was Rocky IV. This one graded really well, condition-wise, not movie-wise. A really good condition release of Conan the Barbarian. Then we have Death Ring, super obscure movie for sure, but this is a sealed promotional copy. The noteworthy thing about Death Ring is that this is a promotional copy, not for resale, and it's also factory sealed. So is this rare? Probably. How many promotional copies of Death Ring exist in sealed form? I don't think anybody knows. It's like how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Pop? No one ever really finds out. So they get too impatient and they bite into the... Then we have tentacles. Now this is a totally fake tape created by actor, writer, producer Rob Schraub. Uh, this one has fake pictures on the back. That's Bill Hader from something. And one of the interesting things is that we shrink wrapped this. but the horror sticker is under the shrink wrap. And same with the video update video store sticker is under the shrink wrap, which, which means it's been post shrink wrapped by someone, but it's not even a real movie. So we'll see what the grading service makes of this. We wanted to see if a tape with so many obvious red flags would just get graded without a second thought. But to the grading company's credit, they dismissed the tape and didn't charge us for the grading service. Lastly, and most importantly, a sealed copy of a movie that's oftentimes the butt of the joke. Oh, Nuki. It's a mostly forgotten terrible movie that was never released on any format past VHS, other than Laserdisc. Over the years, people have sent us Nuki tapes. 
and we've even bought them off eBay whenever we had the chance. It became kind of a running joke of our own, collecting them and teasing that one day we might watch Nuki on our show Best of the Worst. We're proud to say we very well could be the owners of the world's largest collection of Nuki VHS tapes. What's the ratio of, of sealed to unsealed Nukis on our Nuki shelf? Sealed can be a trick uh, because sometimes the bottom is open. So, we found a copy of Nuki in the best condition and sent it off to be graded. Oh, look at that. I think it did pretty well. Would you look at that? <laughs> now, it's time to test the theories we presented in this video. What makes something valuable? So we have Nuki. It's currently sealed. It's a rare VHS tape. And while this movie isn't popular or famous like a lot of the other tapes we see on auction, it does have a bit of notoriety. This specific tape is also now famous. Well, sort of famous internet famous from being in this red letter media video. It's not much, but it's something. Lastly, and most importantly, remember when I said we could possibly have the world's largest collection of Nuki tapes on the planet? Well, our final criteria for value is rarity. What if we were to make this sealed and preserved Nuki tape even more rare? By destroying every copy of Nuki we collected over the last decade, well, Jay, we have 104 copies of Nuki on VHS that we plan to destroy today. That's right, but first, we realized that none of us have ever actually watched Nuki, so we sat down and we had a, a special, magical screening of Nuki. The last screening ever of Nuki. And memories that'll last a lifetime. Miko! Miko! Can you have him blink at the same time? <laughs> He's an alien, Rich. I suppose. Nuki! Nuki! This is Nico! Nuki! <laughs> Nuki! 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 The first and last screening of Nuki. And I'm actually glad we watched it because I realized that I fucking hate the movie. It's awful. It's boring. It's shitty. It's repetitive. Nuki! <laughs> Nuki! One more. Come on, one more. Nuki! Maybe one more? Nuki! We'll just have that playing over the entire uh, destruction of all the tapes. <laughs> oh, God. Just over. Nuki! Nuki! I am glad we are destroying all these copies of Nuki. We're doing a great service to humankind. Nuki, I am prisoner of America. Nuki, help me, free me, Nuki. Ah, ah, oh. 75% of this movie has been them just saying each other's names. Yes, yeah. I know. <laughs> Nuki. Oh, stop saying Nuki and Miko, please. <laughs> Well, let's get going. Nuki was looking for America, and he found it. This is America, Nuki. As experts in destroying tapes, we talked about the many different ways we could get rid of all of these copies of Nuki. A giant vat of acetone? Hitting them with hammers or blunt force? Mm, probably would take a while and be very exhausting. Setting them on fire? Maybe. But what about all the toxic, burning plastic fumes? Shooting them with guns? We thought something more spectacular might be in order. We bought a wood chipper. Sure, it ain't a Fargo wood chipper, but I think it'll get the job done. So let's shred us up some nukies, eh? Fuck yeah! Spice some things up right now. We're gonna take the Dark Lord of the Sith 
and we're, we're gonna fire some nukies at him. Direct, directly at his crotch. <laughs> someone just randomly sent us and we got it in the mail today so thank you to Ian and Hannah for this wonderful gift well now that we've destroyed as many copies of Nuki as we possibly could hopefully that'll now make our graded mint condition sealed VHS copy of Nuki more valuable, right? Are there more Nukies out there in the world? Probably, but not as many now. So now let's test the lessons that we've learned in this video. That's right, we're going to auction off this maybe rare copy of Nuki sealed in plexiglass. But to show that we're not actual monsters, we're gonna donate all the money earned from the auction to charity, for real. That's right, we're gonna split it between two charities, uh, St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital and the Wisconsin Humane Society. What, 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 what two great charities, I could think of no better charities to give to. Well, Nuki has animals and children, so it's appropriate. Uh, the, 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 the most innocent things in the world that suffer our cancer kids and homeless animals, and God bless them both. We're gonna try to give them as much money as we can by auctioning off this fucking tape. So bid on it, you dumb <laughs> <laughs> So the eBay link is in the description below, and happy bidding. This could be yours. Who wouldn't want that? Will this graded VHS go for a lot of money? Who knows? We'll see. You know, Jay, I'm gonna miss all those Nuki tapes up in the screening room. Don't be sad, Mike. We've replaced the Nuki tape rack with a photo of the Nuki tape rack, so it'll always be there in the background. That's great. That warms my cold, dead heart. Looks like we're done for today. Good shoot, everybody. See you guys tomorrow. <laughs>